Okay, so in this video, we're going to learn how to draw the cervical plexus. Now, as you can see, I've already drawn out the skull and five cervical vertebrae. Just for clarification, you don't have to do this. And now, what you are going to want to do is write from C1 all the way down to C5. So C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. Remember to draw them on top of the cervical uh, vertebrae because they are labeled from above each segment. Okay, so before I start drawing out the cervical plexus per se, you're going to want to uh, draw a line all the way out here to the right and label that as your hypoglossal nerve. Remember that is nerve, uh, cranial nerve 12 and it innervates the tongue. And all the way over on the left side, draw a line all the way down and label that as your accessory nerve. Accessory, that's your cranial nerve number 11. Okay, so let's start drawing out the cervical plexus by connecting each uh, C. So C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. Now... For clarification, I am going to draw the muscular or motor nerves, remember those are the deep nerves in red, on the right side. And on the left side, I'm going to draw the posterior, I mean the sensory or cutaneous nerves, which are going to be the superficial uh, nerves in green. So I'm going to draw the motor nerves. We're going to start by drawing a straight line all the way out from C1, and that line will... Uh, have a Y at the end, form a Y. The first one will be the geniohyoid nerve, geniohyoid. The second one will be the thyroid, thyrohyoid nerve. Now, you're going to draw a line from C2 going down to C3 and then coming right back up to C1. And then draw a line out from C3 connecting that curve. Okay, and on that curve, we're going to draw three lines out. Remember the order? Oh shit, so omohyoid, uh, sternohyoid and sternothyroid so oh shit and these uh, five nerves make up the ansa cervicalis see that, uh, there we go, it fits okay, uh, remember the geniohyoid it, uh, it's a motor nerve. It's gonna innerv uh, it's gonna innervate the tongue. It carries the tongue and hyoid bone hy hyoid bone upwards uh, during de deglutition. The thyrohyoid will elevate the thyroid and depresses the hyoid bone. The omohyoid depresses and stabilizes the hyoid bone, and uh, the sternohyoid. Uh, the sternohyoid depresses the hyoid bone too. And the sternothyroid depresses the thyroid cartilage. Okay, so we're going to go over to the phrenic nerve. Remember the phrenic nerve? It's a dual nerve. It's going to be a sensory and motor nerve for the diaphragm. So draw a line out from C3, C4, and C5. Now I'm going to draw the line from C4 a lot thicker. Why? Because it is the main uh, branch or segment that innervates the phrenic nerve. Remember the phrenic, everything that's phrenic will be for the diaphragm. Okay, I'm going to draw one last nerve, but I'm going to draw it in white just because some books uh, have it present and that's going to be directly from C5, that's why I drew a dot, just from C5 and that's going to be the nerves to rhomboids and uh, serratus anterior and serratus see if it appears so uh, come on serratus anterior okay 
Okay, there we go. I'm more or less. Okay. Uh, now, if that uh, nerves to rhomboids and stratus anterior, as, it na as its name says, it's going to innervate the major and minor rhomboids and stratus anterior muscle. Okay, I'm going to switch colors over to green. I'm going to go over to the left-hand side, and I'm going to draw the cutaneous or sensory nerves. Remember, these are superficial nerves. I'm going to start by drawing a dot in C2 all the way out, and that's going to be our lesser occipital nerve. Lesser occipital nerve. Uh, in between C2 and C3, I'm going to draw two lines out. One up, one down. Uh, the first one's going to be the greater or great auricular nerve. Uh, the second one will be the transverse cervical nerve. And the last nerve is going to be the supraclavicular nerve, which is going to come out from in between C2 and C4. And remember, supraclavicular. Another uh, way to remember these uh, cutaneous or sensory nerves will be by oats. So the O in lesser occipital, the A in great auricular, the T in transverse cervical, and the S in supraclavicular. Uh, the lesser occipital, uh, it's going to be the sensory nerve for uh, the cutaneous innervation of the neck and scalp posterior to uh, and superior to ear. The great auricular will be the cutaneous innervation of the skin over the gland posterior to the ear and neck. The transverse cervical uh, would be the cutaneous innervation of, of the anterior triangle of the neck. And the supraclavicular nerve will be the cutaneous innervation of neck and shoulder. And because I drew the hypoglossal and accessory nerve, the remember the hypoglossal nerve is cranial nerve uh, number 12. It's going to innervate the tongue, which is going to aid in speech, food manipulation, and swallowing. While the accessory nerve, uh, remember cranial nerve number 11, will be uh, innervating the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscle. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention were, were the spinal segments from which the nerves originate. Now, here we have the geniohyoid uh, nerve, and it goes straight out from C1, and so does the thyrohyoid nerve. Okay, all the, the, uh, those two come from C1. Now, the rest of the ansa cervicalis, the oh shit nerves, the omohyoid, sternohyoid, and sternothyroid all come from C1, C2, and C3. That is how we can see them. Um, the phrenic nerve, as I said, com it comes from C3, C4, and C5, having C4 being the, uh, the primary branch. Uh, the nerves to rhomboids and serratus anterior come from just C5. That's why I drew a dot over to the left side for the posterior nerves. Uh, the lesser occipital comes just from C2. That's another dot. Uh, the greater auricular comes from C2 and C3. That's why it's in between both C2 and C3. Uh, the same holds true for the supraclavicular nerve, which comes from in between C3 and C4.